Today for this mini tutorial session here on Procreate, let's talk about iridescence. Still one of the top trends when it comes to graphic design and even interior design. I guess the best way that I can describe iridescence design is an aesthetic that mixes soft pastel colors on one side with fluorescent colors on the other side and having those two things mixed and glazed with some transparency. Everything is then struck by some source of intense lighting, which gives this really glittery kind of shining effect. So the big question that I was asking myself for this week is, is it really possible to have some iridescence design in Procreate 5? Can we create some brushes, some typography elements, and even some illustrations that use iridescent colors? I believe that I found a solution that mixes clipping masks and some design elements. So let's just now jump into Procreate 5 so I can show you. First, let me show you a couple examples that I've built here on Procreate 5, and then I'm gonna show you how you can actually build it yourself. So imagine that you could have a brush that could paint like this. So it's got a really nice color range, and it's got an effect that's really, really cool, certainly taking inspiration from iridescence. So now let's take a look at a different brush. And then once again, to see how nice the colors and, you know, the aspect of iridescence is really, really there. So, you know, you've got the lights hitting, you got the um, combination of soft pastel colors with some fluorescent colors as well. Now imagine that you could also do that to some typography. So you could just turn on a layer and you could see your typography with not only some iridescence, but you could go into the different edit styles and you could change size, you could change, um, you know, the style of your font and everything would respect the iridescence colors. Now, finally, imagine that even on your drawings and on your illustrations, you could actually do something like this. For example, right here, I've actually copied one of the outlines or the line work of one of my illustrations and it's got all of the colors from the same effect. So how did, how did I actually build this? How did I make this happen? It certainly wasn't on the brush studio as cool as it is, as really like as many options as it has, it wasn't really enough for me to actually build an iridescence effect on the brush studio. So this is what I've done. I've actually taken and I've created a series of textures and I've managed to collect 12 high resolution textures that you can use on your own designs. So I'm going to show you on a new file right here how you can actually build this. First, I'm just gonna hit on the iridescence layer and I'm going to copy so that I can build this on a new file. So I'm just gonna click on a new file, screen size, and right here, the first thing that I wanna do is just put a, a black color here. We're just making a, a background. In our background layer, I'm just gonna slide and make sure it's locked. And now on our second layer, I'm just gonna go into the actions menu, paste. And here's one of the stills that I've taken with photography. I just got a bunch of uh, iridescent, uh, iridescent materials and I've taken a series of uh, photos. Then I've color correct them, color correct them and treated them so that they're really good and high resolution pictures to use on any kind of designs. So now that we have this texture layer, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to set this layer just underneath the um, iridescence layer. And I'm gonna click on our texture layer and set it to clipping mask. And all of a sudden, the texture is gone. But that is because clipping mask, if you haven't watched any of my videos about clipping masks or layer masks, I'm going to link it here at the top right section of the screen. And it's a video that you should definitely watch so you understand what are the technical aspects of clipping masks and layer masks. But basically, a clipping mask is actually waiting for any alpha, any boundaries, or anything to be drawn on the parent layer. So whatever layers have this little arrow pointing down, they are all uh, going to respect the boundaries of our parent layer. So in this case here, I'm just gonna choose any color. I might just go with white. And now if I use a brush, as soon as I paint, I'm actually telling layer two that there is something here on the parent layer 
for it to be able to display our texture back on to our canvas. So it's a, it's a matter of visibility. So if I actually use the um, eraser brush, and I'm just gonna make it quite big, if I start erasing our parent layer, I'm actually starting to obscure things from our layer two, our texture layer. So basically with this effect, you get many things as a bonus. For example, you could click on your text on your texture layer and you can move this around. You could scale it down, you could scale it up. Of course, just be careful that to, uh, to not scale down too much or like uh, under the boundaries of our parent layer or your graphics layer because then you're not gonna be able to cover. The important thing here is to make sure that the texture layer covers the entire um, you know, boundaries of whatever you're trying to draw, use it as a typography element or hand-drawn uh, calligraphy elements. It's just important to make sure that the texture layer is actually covering the whole screen. So uh, basically with this technique, it allows you to move the texture around. It allows you to swap textures. So in this package of 12 textures, maybe you wanna play around with a few different ones and achieve different results. So all of this is possible by using the combination of a clipping mask and the artwork that you want to create at the parent layer. So to give you another example, let's just go into one of uh, another illustration that I have here. I'm just gonna go into this one, for example, copy the line work. I'm just gonna hit copy, go back into our uh, file right here our working file, I'm gonna click on our layer, which is the parent layer. And I just wanna show you guys something. You don't have to actually slide and delete uh, because if you do that, you're actually going to break the uh, parent child relationship here with the clipping mask. So if you, want to, if you want to actually start over, you can just click on the layer and hit clear. And now if I go here on the actions menu and I uh, paste, I am pasting this back into the parent layer. And just look how cool the illustration actually now looks like with this technique of iridescence uh, effect or graphics. So all of a sudden, I almost have a new variation that I could print on a black t-shirt. I could make something really super cool and uh, very neon-like by just using this technique with an existing illustration that I already had. I basically created a new variation, almost like a new version of uh, a same kind of illustration that I already had. And I could post that on my Instagram, Facebook, any kind of social media, uh, Dribble, And uh, it's a really uh, new way to actually use some of your own existing stuff, but just making sure that you're putting through the clipping mask effect so you could uh, create greeting cards, you could create banners, invitations, all done with this really, really cool technique of the iridescence. And finally, guys, one last thing is that, of course, you can also use that to uh, write anything that you want. So you can create some really cool um, things using uh, hand-drawn calligraphy and still using the same premise that we're drawing, we're creating anything we're actually creating in the parent layer as your clipping mask is just sitting at the top and that is the texture, that's where the colors are coming from. So if you wanna check all of the different textures, if you wanna learn a little bit more, I'm going to leave the link in the description box of this video and this link is going to contain all of the graphics package for this iridescence design. So I believe that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any tips and tricks, reviews, and speed paint videos. And that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the powerful Brush Studio and Procreate 5, make sure to click on the video that is on the right side of the screen right here, as it talks about how to create a really cool neon brush set in Procreate 5. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.